the end of this center of that object right there and the center of that one right there. Notice it snaps to the center of, of lines like this as well. And that actually puts a snap point which you can now see right in the middle of the package body. Now if we wanted to it would be a pretty trivial matter of lining that up with the reference which you can see where that little 3D reference point is right there. And that's actually even easier to do in 2D mode. If I hit 2 the 3D body is represented as a component body in 2D. So I can grab it and note that the cursor snaps to that snap point. Now I can just use Control End to jump to the reference location of the component footprint and there it is. It's all lined up nicely. I could hit 3 there. Um, in this particular case I'm using the wrong 3D model for the actual footprint so technically that's not perfect but what I might do is just move that down just a tad. I should probably do that in 2D mode actually because okay, control end again and then what I'm going to do is just use the down arrow to make sure those those footprints are soldering to the pads properly there. There we go. And at that point in this case, to get manufacturing correct for pick and place, uh, if we go back to 3D mode there, you'll see the pads all line up fine and you can actually put an SOT223 on this and that forms a nice big heatsink for it. But And so this will work, but to manufacture it, this has to be placed in that point and by the center of the package. So what I want to do is change the reference point so my pick and place file in the PCB editor actually comes out with the 3D parts reference point instead. I could go through that just to keep things simple. I'm not going to worry about doing that right now. What I am going to do though is save the library now that I've updated it and I'm also going to update the PC board with the current footprint since I've done an update to the footprint. Now the PCB, you can see the asterisk there shows it's been modified. And in the PCB editor, if I just do a ZA for zoom all and VB to unflip the board view. And then I hit 3 to go back to 3D. You can see there's our board in 3D. And if I flip over now, we have that voltage regulator sitting on the bottom of the board with its nice big heat sink pad right there. And um, that's basically the process. Now, I've made a change. I'm going to save the board and you'll note that uh, by adding the step file to the project, by adding the step model into the PCB library component and by updating the board, the project, the board and the library have all been changed in their, in their, um, um, they've all been modified and saved locally. So they're now out of sync with version control and I need to update those. In addition to that, I need to add the extra step model to version control. So I'm going to right click on that first and do that first and go add to version control. Put a comment there. That's now in version control and up to date. And now um, what I'm going to do is commit all other changes of the of the project to version control. In addition, there's another thing down here, which is my BOM. Um, before I started recording, I actually reran and created a new BOM report from the design as well. So that'll be updated also. I'm just going to right click on the project, version control, and commit the whole project. Now what it does is it just shows me only the documents within the project and the project file itself which have been modified, everything else won't be changed as part of this revision and I can leave the same common comment for all of those documents that need to be added in uh, as one atomic process. So I'm going to say updated um, library with SOT223 3D model and um, updated PCB with SOT223 3D model 
and keep it consistent there. Um, um, I'll just say uh, updated PCB project updated BOM. I hit OK. It's checking everything into version control over HTTP. Everything's now up to date there and I can go back and use the storage manager panel to see every single folder or document within the project that's been added or changed. Now the current PCB file let me go back to 2D mode real quick. There's been a number of changes to this over the over the time being, but back in the storage manager panel with this uh, where is that PCB document? There it is, it's the highlighted one. And if I just expand that up a little, you see all the different revisions where this document changed in the version control system. I haven't set up any kind of authentication yet on my machine, so that's why it's showing no author. But normally you would also see the username of the person who checked in the changes or made those changes. But you've got the date, the timestamp, and the comment that you left at that point. So if I want to compare any two revisions of this PCB, uh, so maybe I'll compare um, this revision with revision 9, I can hold down control I uh, don't know what's going on there yeah, I hold down control and select those two revisions, I can right click and run compare now it's opening checking out those two different specific revisions of the board and running the comparator on them both to show me each and every distance and it shows me here the difference is IC8. I updated that package and in the current revision you can see it's got that extra 3D body there. Let me put these in 3D mode and let me hit L to enable the step models. And if I flip around in that you can see it actually highlights the object that it's referring to. All of the other 3D models are shown but they're shown in grayscale because this is the one that actually uh, changed. Let me show you this one in 3D. And of course there's nothing there. It's just trying to show me the pads but through the 3D rendering engine on my particular video card it's, it's kind of um, got some sort of funny aliasing thing going on there but but you can still see the marked difference and just to make sure to turn these on to verify that it is in fact not there on this version and it is there on this version so um, version control adding 3d models it's a it's a extremely powerful tool now of course you can take something cool like this whole assembly and if this is going to be a standard off-the-shelf model that you use in a lot of different projects let me just close those different compare versions you can save the PCB out so I'll do a save copy as for example and export it as an IDF or a step. Step is probably better because it's more accurate than IDF but if you export a step model of the entire assembly, you can then import that again as a library component to do comparisons where you're going to make different boards together and so on. So, it's pretty cool.